Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to the fourth All-Russian Masters Tournament in St. Petersburg 1906. And today I would like to show you the game from the second to last round of the tournament, as it was very important for the final standings, but also because something unusual happened uh, during that round. And I told you about that in the last game, uh, where Akiva Rubinstein won against Benjamin Blumenfeld and Blumenfeld was involved in this game I'm gonna show you today very very much so the story was over there if you click and check the game of Rubinstein and Blumenfeld uh, you will you will get it uh, but today I would like to continue uh, and first I want to uh, you know uh, give you some citation from the book of John Donaldson and Nikolai Miniev the life and games of Akiva Rubinstein part one so they write as follow it seems that when the adjournment for this game was played off Rubinstein's rival for second place Benjamin Blumenfeld had finished his schedule and was a point and a half ahead of Akiva. However, Blumenfeld's position was shaky as Rubinstein was clearly better in his adjourned game and was scheduled to meet one of the Thailanders Talvik in the last round. It seemed likely that Rubinstein would win both games and finish clear second and there was nothing Blumenfeld could do about this. So uh, yeah this is this is how it happened and then there were no other adjournments played off that night but there were quite a few spectators who came to watch this most important game for the tournament standings the crowd was very noisy and blumenfeld was among the most disruptive both Rubinstein and Malutin appealed to the tournament director, but to no avail as the noise continued unabated. At this point, they both declared that they were continuing the game under protest. Rubinstein missed a clear win on move 45, which we believe was the last move of time scramble, because time control was after 30 moves and then after 45 moves. After making the time control, Akiva then proceeded to fall apart, making a series of weak moves. When he was forced to resign on move 56, he immediately followed up on his earlier protest to the tournament committee. The following day, the committee met with the two players and came to the decision that the game should be replayed from the adjourned position and that Blumenfeld must give his word never to be disruptive again. It's kind of funny. I mean, maybe not for Rubinstein, but, but it's funny what the referees could do in that situation. And interesting what would happen in the tournaments nowadays in the 21st century. It's probably uh, the rules are more strict nowadays. Uh, Malutin, who seems to have a, been a very good sportsman, accepted the decision gracefully, even though it meant almost a certain loss as Blumenfeld Blumenfeld for some reason and his friends has already shown the winning plan to Rubinstein. Not wanting to win in such a fashion, Rubinstein offered a draw which was accepted. So this is some very interesting story from that tournament. So we don't know circumstances exactly why Blumenfeld uh, showed the winning plan. Maybe he felt ashamed and then told, OK, I, I, I'm going to show that. Or maybe he just wanted to prove to Rubinstein that he see the winning moves uh, and Rubinstein didn't. I have no idea. Um, but as you see, uh, Blumenfeld is remembered from this tournament as the player who, you know, don't care about fair play, only about the his result uh, and Rubinstein and Malutin a very very strong fair play I have no idea why Blumenfeld um, told about the plan how to how to win uh, to Rubinstein maybe he felt ashamed that what he did that it was really um, not good or maybe he just wanted to you know show off that he knows the 
and uh, the winning moves and Rubinstein didn't uh, but it was highly unfair and uh, really not fair play from the other hand Malutin didn't need to agree to continue the playing from the actually lost position uh, so Rubinstein could get one point uh, Malutin also could get one point if he don't agree but both of them very strong fair play congratulations to both of them um, I'm really amazed by you know their um, behavior uh, that that was very very good example of fair play in chess okay that's being said so let's jump into the introduction of the players we have Akiba Rubinstein 23 years old and uh, his ranking according to the chess matrix 2562 and his opponent is Boris Malutin a Russian player who is 22 years old at that time and his ranking uh, we don't know because he doesn't have the record in the chess metrics but I estimate his strength uh, as 2450 because he played in a couple of tournaments in St. Petersburg uh, and he got some interesting results and after he met uh, Rubinstein and Salve he also went to uh, the Germany to, to some Haupt tourniers uh, where he also played the games. Uh, and uh, one more thing, um, Boris Malutin was one of the organizers of the legendary uh, tournament in St. Petersburg 1914. Capablanca, Lasker, Rubinstein and other famous players uh, played there. Uh, and yeah, that's what we know about Malutin. Also, he died very, very early in 1920, but I didn't find the information how he died. Uh, he was only 36 years old, so it's very strange, but a couple of players had the problems with health. Uh, and also keep in mind that that was the uh, Russian Revolution just three years before, and a lot of uh, things happened uh, in Russia at that time. So if I have any, you know, uh, Russian uh, subscribers, maybe you can find in some um, Russian sources what happened to Boris Malutin. If you know, just leave in the comment. That would be very, very interesting. Okay, without further ado, let's jump into the game. Akiba Rubinstein's open as white d4 and we have d5 by Malutin. Knight f3, knight f6, uh, e3, e6, very, very slow approach. We have c4, knight b on d7, knight on c3 by Rubinstein. We have c6, semi-slav defense, normal variation, bishop on d3, bishop on d6, and castle by both sides. We have e4, uh, one of the most uh, exciting moves in this game. Uh, D takes on c4, bishop takes on c4, and now we have e5. Bishop on g5, queen on e7, uh, bishop on b3, and now rook on d8. Rook on e1, uh, and here is the move which is not played anymore. This position was reached even in 2017. Uh, even Ding Liren played that, but uh, in this position, Knight f8 was played um, in 1906. It's not played anymore, but that was the Malutin idea. Uh, it's not like it's a very bad move, but it gives more initiative to white. We have d takes on e5, bishop takes on e5, and queen on c2 as the queen was under attack. Uh, knight on g6 and knight on e2. Uh, we have h6 kicking the, the bishop. Rubinstein first take the bishop on e5. We have knight on e5 and only now bishop takes on f6. Queen takes on f6 and now f4. Uh, knight on g6 by Malutin and g3 solidifying the position. We have bishop on g4 and now e5 attacking the queen. Uh, queen on f5 asking to exchange the, the queens and Rubinstein actually accept. Queen on f5, bishop on f5, rook e on d1 and bishop on g4 pinning the knight. Uh, king f2 protecting the knight and knight on e7. So knight gonna jump uh, somewhere to the center. We have bishop on c2, knight on d5 
and bishop on e4 attacking the knight we have bishop on e2 and now king takes on e2 knight on c7 and now king on e3 centralizing the king uh, we have king on f8 so black also uh, coming to the center and now h4 by rubinstein king on e7 we have f5 and now uh, black probably should go for the for the attack on the queen side as they have the three pawns against two pawns uh, but we have knight on a6 and this is the move where white's gonna get the more initiative but it's still uh, not winning for white uh, and 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 it's coming with with some plan so we have g4 and knight on c7 now the knight can um, come to d5 we have king on f4 and rook a on c8 uh, we have a3 by rubinstein and knight d5 with check king f3 uh, and rook on c7 rook on d2 rook c on d7 and now rook a on d1 uh, and here knight on b6 rook takes on d7 rook takes on d7 uh, rook takes on d7 and knight takes on d7 and here we have king f4 uh, a5 uh, bishop on c2 uh, we have knight on c5 g5 h takes on g5 and king takes on g5 so now the position of the of the king is uh, very active here and black has to be very careful uh, we have b5 by by black h5 so another pawn is coming we have b4 also attack on the on the queen side by black and here we have f6 g takes on f6 and e takes on f6 and now white has the passed pawn uh, we have king on f8 and here is the situation which we are talking about uh, now rubinstein has to make the move uh, and there is the according to the engine there are more than one move but you know for many many years uh, nobody found other moves even with using the engine and i checked the lines with the engine and it's not so clear how engine would win as white uh, so so it's uh, sometimes you know engine don't show you everything but here actually in this moment feel free to pause the video and find the plan how to win as white and you can also imagine that you are totally disrupted by some you know your opponents uh, uh, from other games uh, your rivals you know screaming around and trying to harass you and uh, while i enjoy my cup of tea Okay, ready? So Blumenfeld found this, uh, f found this move and told Rubinstein after Rubinstein lost the game, uh, which was, you know, agreed to be a draw later. Uh, the move which we are looking for is Bishop on H7. Very strong move. If you found this, uh, you are a very good um, endgame player. The point is, white want to move the H6 pawn, but white also don't want this king to come to g8 because if the king is on uh, h8 then nothing can be uh, done here and black would probably uh, have the too much uh, activity on the queen side uh, so what is the point here um, the point is to move h6 and then bishop on g6 bishop on g6 sacrificing the bishop and if bishop is taken actually this pawns uh, one of these pawns gonna uh, gonna promote to the queen so for example knight on e6 if black will not be uh, you know disruptive as possible king g4 b takes on a3 b takes on a3 and now black can get the uh, passed pawn c5 uh, and I'm gonna show you this line because it's like it looks like the most attractive and straightforward. There are um, a lot of uh, different lines which which are quite complicated, but this looks like you will understand the position what's going on. Now h6, c4, and now the move. Uh, according to the engine, bishop on f5 also winning here, uh, but only because this this knight is here. Uh, 
Um, but bishop on g6, if the knight is in different position, this gonna work always. And now if f takes on g6, then now h7. And this move is so powerful because this pawn now controls g8, so the king can approach and this pawn controls g7. That's uh, that's the really, really great. So uh, white, of course, gonna promote and win the game. Uh, so that's the solution. If you found this in this position, then congratulations, really great. Uh, however, Rubinstein play bishop on f5, which is uh, at least according to the engine also winning. Uh, we have king on g8, we have king on f4, and now interesting plan by Malutin. First he play b3, so he don't exchange and create the passed pawn, as king could probably catch it. So he found another way. Now um, the knight can jump on a4 and then pick up the b2 pawn, uh, which is pretty interesting. And But still, the engine now shows the line h6 uh, and it's still winning for white. But, but it's quite crazy. Knight on a4, h7 with check, king h8, that is the problem. But now bishop on e6 would be very, very powerful. And now if f takes on e6, then uh, f7, of course, wins. And white gonna, you know, promote one of the queens or both. And black can just pick up one of them. So that would be the, the winning move. And if bishop on e6 and we would have knight on b2, then simply bishop takes on b3 and the passed pawn is gone. Now knight on d3 just king f5, uh, king h7, um, now bishop f7 can, can pick up this pawn and, uh, and yeah, c5, bishop c4, blocking, knight b2, uh, and now white actually can go, don't need to move the, the bishop, can, can just calculate uh, precisely and play uh, king on e6, knight on c4, f7, king g7, king e7, and white would also win. So uh, it was still possible uh, for Rubinstein to win uh, in this position. However, he go back to g5. Uh, so imagine how disruptive was, you know, environment, uh, what happening around Rubinstein that he play um, this move. Uh, we have knight on a4 and now h6, so Rubinstein followed this um, this idea. And now Malutin somehow he didn't pick up the b2 pawn, uh, which is of course the best. Uh, but, but it's still just drawing. Uh, knight on b6, this is what he played, so uh, not really great move. Uh, we have bishop on d three by Rubinstein, we have c5, we have bishop on b5, this move doesn't make any sense, bishop on b5 just just losing the game, because now just c4, bishop on c6, c3, uh, b takes on c3, and b2, uh, Rubinstein play uh, bishop on e4, we have a4, uh, and now king on f4, Knight on d5, knight of course can't be taken because of the promotion, uh, king e5 attacking the knight, but now knight on c3, uh, and here Rubinstein play bishop on b1, knight takes on b1, and he went to, you know, uh, to make the protest, and as we already know, next day the players agree to a draw, even Rubinstein could go to this position and uh, don't play bishop on f5, he could play just bishop h7 as Blumenfeld uh, showed the way to the victory. So that's the game and let's see the final standings. Uh, here we go. Gersh Salve won St. Petersburg 1906 tournament, 13 points, one full point ahead of Rubinstein and Blumenfeld. And uh, Rubinstein and Blumenfeld second place exec for 12 points and Znosko Borowski uh, 11 and a half and Awapin 10 and a half. Uh, we have also Dushotimirski and Malutin on 13 place, not really great tournament. And Chigorin won one game, lost three games and had to withdraw from the tournament. Uh, and as you see in this game, Rubinstein could get the sole second place, 
but he offered the draw to Malutin. So um, that's the full story of this tournament. Uh, if you ever hear about the 1906 uh, St. Petersburg tournament, now you know Blumenfeld was the ga guy who, you know, play not fair play and Rubinstein and Malutin were very, very fair play um, masters. Okay, so if you like this story, press like. If for some reason you don't like the story and you like only the chess games, uh, you know, without any stories, press unlike and uh, and yeah, leave the comments. And maybe you are from Russia and you found, you know the story of uh, Malutin, what happened to him in the age of 36. And if you don't want to miss any other parts of Akiba Rubinstein saga, press subscribe, press the bell button, and thanks for watching, see you in the next one!